Hello again to you ladies, you gentlemen, and you everything in betweens. I am Matt Ruda, aka Ninja Molder 5, here again with another Andrew Borth says career mode on expert mode commentary. My first one in a while, and funnily enough, my first one on my new computer. Yes, I finally got a decent computer, so you will no longer hear me complaining about all the mess that was that laptop that I've been using for two years now. But we got a potentially exciting, potentially, and probably very boring race here at Valencia, the track infamous for nothing but putting me to sleep. I actually literally, last year, during a live race of this, fell asleep. I think it was about lap 35 was the last one I remember. But any um, he received Bortz's goal, finished above 11th, easy in an HRT, really easy for Andrew Bortz. Qualifying P10, so he's already beaten that by one position. Way out qualifying his teammate again. He's going to go through his setup now. Like I said, new computer and yes, for all my Codemasters hate, I caved. I bought F1 2011 on the PC, so anyone who plays this online, once I get these connection issues that I'm having figured out, you'll be seeing me there. Sorry if I crashed into you, but I've being a 360 okay, guys, user who only drove with a controller, I've never had experience without TCS on. So apologies in advance for that. And apologies to all you Backmarkers F1s fans out there for not getting out of podcasts in any recent time frame. Life has been busy. I have enough time I can pop out one of these quick, you know, video commentary things. But a full podcast between arranging it and getting everyone connected and shooting it and all that takes way too much time than I have. I can do a half hour. I can't do three hours right now. So we'll try to get you the Australia recap for the Malaysian Grand Prix. I know that's kind of defeats the purpose of a recap, but right, there you go. Prepared, we'll do go. what we can. So we see Bortz rolling out. It's going to be a dry one here at Valencia. That doesn't bode well. I was hoping for rain to maybe spice things up. The grandstands, you can see, are modeled realistically with barely anybody in them. And here we go. The other thing, too, is I got a new set of headsets. Um, or a new set of headphones, rather. This is a, a noise-canceling one, apparently. So I really can't hear myself. So if I'm shouting, I apologize to you and the neighbors who can hear me. But here we go. Bortz turning the wheel to the left. Turn the wheel to the right. <laughs> that wasn't planned or anything. And here we go. Barrichello is in P8 ahead of him. He should be easy enough to take. Suitable enforcing a little harder. And whoa, Bortz is getting a little bit slippery there. Petrov takes him on the inside. But it looks like Schubeck is going to make him on the outside. And here we go into the first corner. Is it all going to go fucking... I don't even know what I was just saying there. Things are crashing. Bortz takes Petrov. Bortz is going to take Rosberg on the outside. He's going to take Barrichello on the outside. Jesus, Bortzy boy. It's lap one. Oh, oh, oh. Almost puts Barrichello into the wall. And Barrichello almost puts him into the wall. It's like Schumacher Barrichello all over again. Going into a section of track that aesthetically I like, but racing-wise is complete crap. Jason Vettel. Can he get Vettel? Vettel goes a little bit wide. So does Bortz, to be fair. Horse is going to get a slipstream. Don't think he's going to be able to make the pass, but he will be able to stay with him already pulling a massive gap to Barrichello. Nope, not going to take him there. Uh, uh, me? No, not going to work. So yeah, um, I'm going to try to avoid recapping too much of the Australian Grand Prix because we need some material to talk about on back. Oh, Bort's getting a little bit sideways there. We need some material to talk about on back markers F1. But, um, Wow. What a race that was. It was insane, for lack of a better word. We had uh, Senna having a very interesting moment. I love the uh, helmet cam from Ricardo during that. I would have shot myself. As we see, Boris is catching on uh, catching Vettel. Alonso seems to be opening a gap up to Sebastian. Though. Pretty much the opposite of real F1. And, oh, Boris taking a very, very opportunistic move on the inside. Vettel should have had that position back, but because this is Codemasters AI, they back off. Just because I bought your game again doesn't mean I'm going to stop bitching. Although, to be fair, after the whole debacle that was Bioware Mass Effect 3, I'm, I, I'm willing to forgive Codemasters for not releasing a patch. Oh god, don't get me started on that. Whoever came up with that scenario... No, not whoever came up with it, because, okay, in the creative process you come up with different things. Whoever implemented that scenario at Mass Effect 3 should be fired and or shot. Well, not shot. That's a bit extreme. Fired. Yeah, fire them. 
I almost said a Jeremy Clarkson there. Luckily, I'm not on live TV. So now we're in for... I'm assuming he's going to be an as you were race here. Valencia. Voice is going to be trying to chase down Alonso. That's probably not going to happen unless there's a big mistake up in front. I have seen the AI go into the wall a few times on this track. Sebastian's trying to get a move on the inside. Force is just going to block that easily. Ah, but I don't know. I know he's on the prime tires, but still, it looks like Bortz is having a bit of understeer on turn in. Uh, turn out, he's pretty good. Actually, got snap over steer on the out. Maybe that's a, just an intrinsic part of his setup. Maybe it's because it's a clean track. I don't know, but could make for a fun race. And yeah, if I, um, if I pause more than normal, it's because I'm listening to the gear changes, because I do have a steering wheel. Um... But I didn't know it wouldn't work with the 360 when I bought it, so it was useless to me then. Now I'm trying to learn all the downshifting patterns. That way I can uh, jump into the expert commentary with my own videos someday, maybe. Probably not. I'm going to be utter shit. As I said, I've never driven with TCS off. <laughs> DRS is now enabled. DRS enabled. Not going to be able to use it on Alonzo, but Vettel will be able to use it on ports if this keeps up. Bort seems to be very tentative on the downshifts going into that corner. I've noticed that he typically is very quick on them. Maybe he's, um, maybe this is a new thing. Maybe it's just a part of the track. He could have a worn engine. A bit of understeer on the turnout there, going into the uh, second part of the chicane. Alonso seems to be clawing a gap. The uh, front five seem to be clawing a decent gap to run another. It looks like the top three are separated from the rest. But other than that... It's pretty much as you were. It looks like the field behind Vettel is closing up to Vettel. We might actually have a pretty close field here today. Looks like Vettel, he has the DRS. He's going to be over the inside boards. He's not going to attempt to block on Vettel. He's going to get past him anyway. Okay, we lost that position. Oh, whoa, but whoa! Jeez! Another very opportunistic move. But Vettel's going to have none of that. He's going to say, I'm faster than you. I'm really, really quick and shit. And, oh, he's going to lose the position to Rosberg. He's losing position to the other German. I was going to make a Battle of Britain joke, but I think that's also inappropriate. As we see, Boris is going to take... Well, Rosberg on the inside, he's going to take Vettel. No, he's not. Does not have the braking ability to take Sebastian, especially on the prime tires. You see him going in. I don't know. Maybe I didn't catch his setup at the beginning. I don't know if he has very low uh, downforce in the rear, but... He seems extremely snappy in this uh, in this race, more than usual. I mean, hell, there wasn't even a lot of snap over steer in the uh, Canada race, which was wet if my memory serves. Sorry for hitting the microphone. I'm still getting used to the new positioning on my face. I just got this today. It's rather cool. But, like I said, I might be shouting for all I know. See, Boris is going to stick with Vettel. If he gets this next turn complex clean, he'll be able to get the DRS on Sebastian. Uh, ooh, a little bit of a bump to the wall. Nothing much. Now we see, he seems to have understeer in that turn all the way throughout, but snap over steer everywhere else. It's very interesting. I'll have to go back and look at his setup. Ooh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He might be 26 thousandths off DRS range. Is he going to be a C? Yes. Just that little bit, Vettel was able to just barely make enough of a gap to keep Bortz out of the DRS range. So now it's a matter of can Bortz stay with him and somehow make up... Whoa! Not like that! Nicely caught! Nicely caught there. Losing a lot of time to Vettel, but most importantly, keeps this car pointing in the correct direction. See, Rosberg is catching. Now, Rosberg, and I think there's one more behind him, but they pulled a decent gap to the rest of the field. Looks like the uh, midfield has shot away from the back markers. Jeez. That's a massive gap. Well, it seems like more than just the back marker cars. It might be a midfielder who's took some damage. There's a bit of bumping and grinding in the first quarter. Not too, too much, but not like Australia. <laughs> that was fun to watch. Feel bad for Grosjean, though. I'm not a huge fan of him. I'm more of a Kimmy fan than anything else, but I did hope the guy would do well in his rebirth into F1, as it were, after what was, to be fair to the guy, a really shittily dealt hand back in the 09, was it? I can't remember. There you go. 
But yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, Pastor, as Steve likes to call him, Rapist Face Maldonado, decided he wanted to just push Grosjean to the outside. And that was the end of that chapter. Although do I although I do like to slag off Maldonado, I have to compliment him on everything. You know what? Actually no, I'm gonna make an analogy here. His race was very, very much like the Mass Effect series. First bit, bit shaky, just getting a feel for it. Mid of the race getting stronger. Then for most of the latter half of the race he was effing brilliant. Challenging Alonzo, I thought he could take Alonzo. I thought he was was gonna take Alonzo. Taking a Ferrari driver in a Williams, which last year I was calling a backmarker team. I know it's one race and we really can't judge anything on that, but if it keeps going like this, if this is a trend, I'll be perfectly happy to say that I was wrong about Williams. Not wrong about the drivers, because I still think they're paid drivers and they should have somebody in there who's experienced, but they might not be as dead as I thought they were at the beginning of the season. Or they might be. Like I said, just one race. We'll have to see how the rest of the season unfolds, but first race good impressions from them I'm, I'm really I was really shocked to be honest when I saw them doing as well as they did Senna accepted of course because he got pounded from the rear and the side and everywhere in the beginning of the race but back to Maldonado so then brilliant and in the last lap he just it's almost like it was a different driver it was like you took out the GP2 champion from that car and instead put inside a mentally challenged person who doesn't even know what a car is, much less a Formula One car, and told them to drive. What the hell he was doing, I don't know. But he put it in the wall and completely ruined what was a fantastic race. And that's my Mass Effect 3 analogy of the day. And I'll stop going on about ME3 because if I don't, I'll talk about that and not Formula One. While I've been yammering, Vettel has pulled about a four second gap to Bortz. He's probably far, far gone. It might be a bit different once Vettel, or once Sports, excuse me, gets on the option tire. Maybe not, though. It is a Red Bull versus a Hispanic. We see Rosberg's catching. I don't know if he has the, um, I think he has the DRS because he was 0.6 of a second behind going into the first sector, the second sector, rather. We see Bortz still battling with that snap over, so he's controlling it nicely, though, I must say. I'd like to see how his tires are doing, though. I have to imagine his rears are a bit worn going to lap 6 of 57. Not the most exciting race, but then again, not the most boring race. This is more exciting than the 2011 Valencia Grand Prix was. The Rio one, not the Bortz one. I think actually the Bortz one was rather exciting, if I remember correctly, if he did a video for that. Or maybe that was Steve. I honestly can't keep track these days. See, Vettel is now catching up to the lead cars. Bortz is just settling in for a nice run. He's got Rosberg behind, but then back further behind that, he's really got no one to challenge him. I doubt that whoever's behind him is going to be able to uh, close that gap. Actually, does he have two people behind him? Is that another white dot? I think that is. Ooh, a bit slippy there. And slippy here. Ooh, well, yep, there it is. I think he just has his... Uh, he either has his downforce way too low or his right height is way too low. If you notice on this track, if you try to do 1-1, one, one, he so much as touch a curb, it's uh, bad news bears. A little bit of a tepid entry on that corner. But it's sports. He knows what he's doing. As so we see Rosberg, he's going to make a move on the out inside, rather. On the option tires, he has a DRS, Bortz lets him buy, Bortz going to do another brave move on the inside, yes he is, he's going to take Rosberg back, sayonara Rosberg, you're not winning this race. That's another guy I kind of feel bad for, he is a good driver, I don't think he is a WDC winning driver, but he should at least have a race or two won under his belt by now, but say la vie. As we go to lap 8, so we still see the field is as you were. Vettel has fallen behind a little bit, but the leaders have pulled a massive gap to Bortz. He's still battling with Rosberg and maybe one other, depending. I think one other, yes. So Rosberg's going to take him on the inside, but Bortz is going to take him on the inside again. I can just feel it. Bortz is going to go for it. Yep, he's got it. He's going to take it again in the exact same fashion. The AI, by the time they get by, oh, there's the second guy. Whoa, whoa and Bortz with the snap over Syriga. Rosberg can get past on the straightaway with his DRS, but then Bortz just can outbreak him. 
Once again, the AI is showing very, how very conservative they are on this track, or any track for that matter. And it's letting boards actually save the tires more than he normally would be able to. If this were real F1 in this situation, you'd have to tear those tires apart just to keep the guy behind you and to make those moves continue. Much like um, Kamui did on Kimi during the race. Won't go much more into detail of that whole exchange, though, because, like I said, I do need material for the... Oh, shit, was that a puncture? Oh, no, not again, it's Monaco all over again. Damn it. Sports, no. Left front puncture. Oh, damn. Uh, he's not going to be able to make the turn. So instead he just puts it into a four-wheel slide. Oh, that's a disaster. This is a disaster. Does ever see more midfielders going back? I'm trying to think. I think this, yeah, this track is mostly right-hand turn. Supports might be okay. Or, no, he won't be okay then. Uh, why can't I remember my weight transfers? Ha, ha, ha. He's screwed. <laughs> for lack of a better word. He is completely screwed. He is, as Speed called Ferrari, Scuderia. I, I thought that was rather cute. Uh, I had to watch the Speed broadcast. Yes, I know. I normally advocate for watching the British streams, but that was before I had this computer, and that was when my internet sucked. So there we can see the tire status. Obviously, the left front is to beyond all measure but his rear tires despite being more worn than they normally would be despite being more worn than his fronts really aren't that bad i'm guessing it's just more of an intrinsic setup thing than a loss of grip but being lap 9 of 57 i'm trying to think he'd probably have to either come in for one prime would a prime stop even get him that far though he might be able to do another prime option sin or he might just do option 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 it depends on if he had to blow any option tires to get through to qualifying. I don't think so, because he started in P10, so it would appear as though he qualified on primes. His force is now getting around the track. Duress in P18, he must have had a moment. He seems to have pulled himself away from the rest of the back markers, though. Oh, boy, this is just horrible to watch. Once again, I, maybe it's just an HRT thing, or maybe I don't exactly know how the puncture mechanic works. It never, I've never had a puncture in single player back in my Xbox career. Once I get different uh, things worked out, I'll be able to start one in, on my PC. But uh, I, I don't know to be honest. So you see, boards going into the pits now. Thirty-seven miles an hour, long, drawn out boring. We should just make it 150 miles an hour just to make this race interesting. That'd be fun watching all the guys scampering to get out of the way of the cars. Oh. Wait. That's new. I've never seen that before. Go. The sports have a mod on or something. I've never seen a pit crew member struggle to get a tire off the car before. That was rather cool. I like that. That was the main reason I decided to buy F1 on the PC. Not even so much. I mean... Yes, it is to race with all the back markers, people who don't have an... Oh, and nicely caught. Who don't have the, um... The Xbox version. But it was also because... Uh, I got my taste of the modding community when I bought Skyrim. The first day I had this PC. And, um, modded the bejesus out of it. And I'm in love. So here we are. Bortz is in P18. And Duresta got behind him in that pit stop phase. But, funnily enough, he's lapping back markers. This is lap 16. His tires have been worn a bit. Still, though, uh, not very hard wear. I guess it's just an aero thing. And come to think of it, the fact that he's not putting as much weight on those tires with less downforce would probably make them wear a lot less. But hey, he, you can see he's struggling for grip. He's out to P17. These are for position. These are not backmarker cars. These are not lead lap cars. Well, they are lead lap cars. Ports is on the lead lap, I think. Memory serves. CC is going to have to stop again in lap 23. So... I don't think a set of primes can take him 34 laps. So if he's going to have to come in twice again anyway, that took him what? He stopped in lap 9, so that would have been 14 laps. So another 28. Oh! I think if Ports is conservative, he can do two more options since. We'll have to see what he does. Vettel sets the fastest time, 
Not much faster than Bortz's best time, so Bortz is staying on the pace. Kobayashi took him on the inside there, but I didn't even mention that. Oh, oh, baby! Uh, oh, Bortz. I mean, not Bwemi, Bortz. Bortz making a very opportunistic move on Bwemi. Almost before he said, oh, oh, that was close. That was close. Very close. That was a Felipe baby moment. We got past Kobayashi fine, and now it's Bwemi. Bortz still battling with the snap over steer. Is he going to be able to take Bwemi going into turn one? I think he is. No. Whoa, Bwemi's got a hell of a run off that corner. Bortz is going to probably have to wait until the DRS zone, and then he should be able to breeze on by. Bit of a slower lap that, because... Uh, he decided to take the sideways approach. I'm not even gonna, um, I know I just mentioned it, but I'm not even going to discuss Felipe Baby in this because uh, we're going we're gonna to leave that for the backmarkers cast when we can all chastise him together. So now, lap 19, four more until the schedule pit stop for tires. If he draws that one out a little bit, if he bleeds off more fuel um, and tries to hover it around optimal, is he going to take him on the inside? No, he's not going to be able to take him there. He tries to hover it around optimal for the rest of the race. Should be able to uh, extend the tire life and get this race done in just two more option stops. Whereas all the leaders are going to have to do a prime stint at some point. The one advantage, I guess, of that crash is Bortz gets zero us. The one advantage of that crash is the fact that he's got his prime stint out of the way. Bortz is not at the top speed to take away there. Whoa! No way he was going to slow down for that corner. Just took it to the inside. But he takes blame me anyway. Wemi does not take advantage of that go on the outside. Wemi just says, okay, I'll, 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 I'll let you take that. And that's why you don't have a drive anymore. Sports has a DRS again. We skipped to lap 26. Let's see who these guys are. Is this Barrichello? Yep, it's Barrichello and Aldo A Williams and a Tarasso. His boards gets a little bit slippery there. And a little bit slippery there. A little bit slippery in this corner too. A little bit, not much. Horse is a lap down on his fuel projections, which is fine. Um, he's three laps over on his tire uh, Oh, oh, what is he going to do? Barrichello, I think he was going to try to pit that lap. Barrichello blocked him. He's on the prime tire, so that was a deep pass. So Bortz is doing exactly what I said. He's trying to keep his fuel down as far as he can and take as much weight off of those tires as possible. Extend their life. I think he could do an option option stint. He might, hell, he might even be able to do just one more stop for primes. It would be a bit of a stretch, 30 laps, but... I mean, you got to think the prime tire is about double the life of the option tire. Oh, 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 nicely caught. Damn, Horst is getting really good at catching these slides. He drives almost like I do. Kamikaze go by Bashi. As we see, this is a back marker in between him and his goal of Aldiswari in P12. Is he going to take, truly, yep, he's going to just take him on the inside. Get out of the way. Yes, truly, those blue flags are for you. As we see, Bortz, he didn't get the DRS though. I thought he, why didn't he though? That's weird. Or is this DRS not working? He should have had DRS there. Huh. That's weird. Okay. So, uh, Bortz doing exactly what I said. Less weight. Longer tire life. Trying to get to this race. He might be able to just do one more stop. Uh, it'd be a stretch. I wouldn't recommend it, but... Last time I recommended something to Bortz, I was completely wrong. So, I'll have to wait and see how this goes. Four laps over his tire stop production. Still one lap down on fuel. See his whole gaggle of cars. That's a back marker there. Aldosuari is dicing his way through him. Stamperosio. Steve's compatriot. His boards is going to go for the pit stop. No, he's not. He's going to stay out. I'd love to see what those tires look like right now. Glock, another back marker. Boards is going to take him. He's a Whoa, Glock, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of the way. You have blue flags, you dumbass. Ah, uh, that guy is retarded. It's the AI, I know. I have nothing against the team. Oh! No! He was so good. I complimented him on... Oh! Things are crashing everywhere. And we have a safety car. Oh! Borch just knocked something out of the race. And this is brilliant. This is exactly what he needs. This is exactly what Borch needs. His spin might have actually just saved his race. He will be able to come in, get tires under the safety car. And with the entire field being bunched up, this is brilliant. This could actually save him. Huh. This is an interesting Grand Prix, I must say. Look at those tires, though. Wow. How he was able to keep that car on the road at all, I don't even know. As we skip ahead a bit in the lap to see Bortz, he's going to come in for the prime tires now. A little bit of a hesitant pit entry there, but nah, nothing Bortz can't handle. 
So you see the safety car is actually already on the back straight. Uh, boards. Are you seriously going to try to go the entire rest of the race on option tires? Okay, there we go. I was about to say. See, I don't know why the Virgin team are ahead of the HRT team. That confuses me. But anyway. Now, Forts. Oh, no. Maybe not as brilliant as I thought it was. Safety car is coming in this lap. They're going to have to fly to catch the rest of the snake. He's now on optimal fuel. And it is engineers telling him to burn more fuel. Well, this isn't the most brilliant thing, but remember, this is... 2011 spec rules so there are back markers in with that field this could be okay restart now for boards we see the field there it's a bit spread out more spread out than I'd like I didn't see a massive dive for the pits though from the lead lap cars so they might Glock you again get the fuck out of the way you idiot Oh my god. I think it's been like the last three races, Bortz' this race has been in some way hampered by Timo Glock's car. Ay ay ay. So I didn't see the leaders coming for the pits. I think that might have been out of phase with their normal pit stops. It looks like whoever's ahead of him hit the wall a little bit there. It's Whammy. Whammy in P. Oh, this is for position. No, it's not. <laughs> that was it to come back to. We see Petro up there battling with a Force India. Is that Sudel? Or is that Duressa? That's Duressa. Okay, so these are all lap cars! That was scary. Weber's apparently going for it. Go Weber, go. Saying he has another stop due in lap 38. For some reason, that math doesn't compute with me. Why would he have to stop so soon? Ah! He might not have had a fresh set of options, or primes, that might be why. We see him setting the fastest time, it's lap 36 now. He's caught up to Aldiswari. The leaders are still spread out more than Wartz would like, but... They gotta come in again. Wartz is two laps down on fuel. He's still in the lead lap, though. Hmm. I don't know how he's gonna play at this one. As we see there, um... Aldiswari just passed Barakello. As I just got a text message. No, I don't want to talk to you right now. Moving on. So Bortz is going to probably have, I would say he's going to have Barrichello going into the last corner. Oh hell, am I have Barrichello now? Whoa! You think I'd be used to that whole flying up the inside thing by now, but no, every time it still gets me all tingly inside. As James May would say, it gives me that slight fizzing sensation. So now it's up to Bortz to catch Aldiswari. Is he going to do it here? No, he's not going to be able to do it here. It looks like Sudo is going into the pit, so he'll have P11. Yep, the leaders are pitting now. So there goes a couple people. Perez. Is he going to get Button too? No, no, Button's in first. Horse is out P10. He's going to have to take... Whoa! Passing him on the outside of that corner. Man, Bortz. Now I understand why you wanted me to get this one so bad. This is exciting. I can't believe I'm actually saying that about a race of Valencia. Lap 38, Bortz's schedule pit stop is this lap. He's still two laps down on fuel, though. That worries me. That really, really worries me. I'm assuming he'll turn it down once he's caught up to this field here. We're going to see the same thing we saw earlier. Aldiswari is going to pass him here. Bortz is just going to hook up and dive on his inside. Oh, no, wait. Aldiswari is holding his line. That's a first. Wow. Impressive. Aldiswari held his line. And he's going to get DRS off of this corner. Or it's smart not to put Aldiswari into the wall. Andrew knows to not run another driver off the track in the closing laps of a Grand Prix. <clears throat> so, um, so, yeah. Oh, and there we go. Again, Bortz is going to have him on the inside. It's a scheduled pit stop this lap. I'd love to see what his tires are like. Have the leaders come in yet? At lap 43... Has Bortz stopped again, or... No. Honestly, I don't know. He passed Schumacher somewhere in there. There's Glock again. Not your help, Vertinus, this time. Up yours. So you see Bortz going to come in again. He's probably going to... Uh, well, how many laps does he have to go? 14. He's going to take a set of the options. 
I don't know if the leaders have to come in again. They might. They might not. Let's see how the crew does this time. No problems there. Exit, exit Bit of a tardy pit stop, 5.6 seconds, but... It's HRT. And Bortz is going to come out. He's just barely going to lose out to Schumacher there. A no Rosberg, wait. So Rosberg, where did Kobayashi go? I thought it was Kobayashi. <laughs> anyway, Bortz is now on his objective position. Tires slightly worn. Nothing too bad. I'll be able to go to the end. He said we fuel it out. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, yawn. Now on optimal fuel, which isn't really optimal because that means you're going to run out. So Bortz passing somebody looked like a back marker. I couldn't really tell because I was looking at other things. I'm sorry. Wave yellow is in sector two. Four laps to go. Hey, have to see who this is. It's good people. Oh, it's <laughs> it's Timo again. Oh, Glock. Oh, Glock. Let's see, Rosberg P9 has pulled away from boards. Oh, 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 nicely caught. Oh, bouncy, bouncy Petrov style. And yep. Is that, wait, is that Rosberg? No, that's Lucy. It's his teammate again. So P10. Not bad considering how that race went. It was looking all good for Bortz until a random puncture once again screwed him over. Whoa! The Utsi, you idiot! Almost take his teammate out. <sighs> this has been exciting. Then we had uh, that spin brought out the safety car, which I thought would save Bortz, but he didn't have enough time to catch back up to the snake. Not a big deal, though. Because he still has P10. He's 10 seconds behind Rosberg. He's 8 seconds ahead of Aldous Warren. I think he has enough fuel to finish the race. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, a little bit sideways there, again. But the snap over Sir Ports has it under control. He completes the first sector for the last time of the Grand Prix. Going into the second one. A little bridge second. See, now, I love this bridge. I love the idea of having a bridge just randomly there, just because of all the different things it does with the surfacing and the air flows. It brings some interesting dynamics into a track design, but this is... God, it's so boring. I need to make it wider and about five quarters less. At this complex here, just connect this to the other right-hand turn you see coming up there. Make it a sweeping long corner. Have an opportunity for some overtaking as the button finishes the race. And that is that. Now Boris is lap up on field projections. Going for a bit of a faster time. They're not going to be able to catch Rosberg, but might as well try for funsies. And he goes off the track on his last lap, but it's no big deal. He has it handled. We have just another left, a right, and a left to go, and we can call this Grand Prix a wrap. Here's the left, here's the right, and here is the last left. As Bortz finishes the European Grand Prix at Valencia, more exciting than I thought it was going to be in P10. And there you have it. Oh, he's stuck in like a German sandwich there. So we got Button, Hamilton, Alonso, Weber, Massa, Vettel, Schumacher, Heidfeld, Rosberg, Bortze Boy in P10, followed by Aldous Warwick, Kobayashi, Sutil, Velikalo, Perez, Petrov, Wemi, Duresta, Luzzi, Truly, Glock, Dombrosio, Kovalainen, Maldonado. Oh, Maldonado. I guess Maldonado was the one who hit him when he uh, spun. So there's the driver settings. Mark Weber in the lead. Well, if only, if only. Well, in P5. Again, if only, if only. With Bortz in P12 with 14 points tied with Kebayashi for P12. And there you have it. That is the standings as they are. Constructors. HRT is in P8. Who are they ahead of besides the other backmarker teams? Force Indy, wow, Force Indy is having a shit season. Williams having a very realistic season of scoring nothing. And there you have it, again, the end of the European Grand Prix. It's been fun. Sorry we haven't had much content for you guys lately, but life gets busy. It's hard to coordinate with two or three people when we all have different things going on. We see Bort shaking a bunch of hands there. Whose model is that? That's an odd player model. I don't think I've seen that one in Nature 2 before. Anywho. Catch you guys next time, where we head to... I honestly can't remember off the top of my head.
the UK. That could be a fun one. Peace out.